recording in progress. So again, welcome everyone, Curtis Loftus, the founder of Deck the Chairs. Uh, if you don't mind, I know this is kind of awkward. I'm gonna just hit based on what I see uh, each of you so you can introduce yourself. So Betsy. Yes, yes. You want it? You want to quickly just say your full name and what do you do with Exit? I am a realtor at, over at Exit Real Estate Gallery at the Beach's office. What's your last name? Waltrip. Waltrip, yep. Thank you. And David. Good evening, everyone. I'm David Chan. I'm a realtor with Exit Real Estate Gallery. I am the Mandarin office. Welcome. Bobby. Bobby Riggins, and I'm also at Exit at the Beaches office. Cool. And Mindy. I am also a realtor at Exit, and I'm out of the Oak Leaf office. Your last name, Mindy, is? Dixon. That's with a C-K, D-I-C-K-S-O-N. Thank you. Back in this thing. Sonny. I'm Sonny. I am uh, the broker at Exit Real Estate Gallery, and apparently five of the 10 participants today are us, so we're, we're excited to be here. Good, yeah. Now you can actually chew up all the time now. <laughs> Miss Holiday. Hi, I'm Meredith Holiday. My husband, Dana, and I are the owners of Holiday Aviation. This is our first year, and we're excited. Patty? Is that your right, Hi, everybody. Patty Jones with Exit Real Estate Gallery. <laughs> Justin, we already talked to Justin. Yep, Justin, go ahead. Hey there, Justin from Donato's Pizza. Your first restaurant partner. Hi. Oh, welcome. Hey there. Yep, Alexandra. Uh, I'm Alexandra. I am with Stuff to Do in Jacksonville, and I'm our operations operations lead and one of the three people that's on our team that's working on Deck the Chairs. Cool. All right, I got everyone. <clears throat> Old-fashioned. Wrote it down. So, um, Last week, we went over the do's and don'ts with most of the group. It was a small group. We had about the same number, but certainly not 10 of you, 10 from one organization. So this is, uh, this is good to uh, have a, a large team. I'm excited. Uh, the do's and don'ts, did you all take a look at the, the newbies that have not attended? Everyone look at the do's and don'ts? Okay. So I'll do a quick brief on it. The chairs that you receive out of deck chairs are real lifeguard chairs. They're not, you don't build the chair. Sometimes people think they have to build a chair. Nope, they're provided by the lifeguards. They're all placed out onto the property ahead of you arriving. So got your little locator maps, right? Uh, I will tell you that this map has changed a few times. So I'm gonna be sending another one out real soon. That's kind of the exhibit map, right? And everyone just know I'll send this again probably tomorrow. We are pretty much locked in now with the exhibit. Uh, it's the hardest part about this in my job is managing uh, people that are <clears throat> part of the Latham, which I call this is the Latham exhibit, Latham Park. And then we have over here, the Seawalk Pavilion areas, the band shells up here at the top. That's right. That's right. And then this down green space down here is Octopus Garden, beaches go green. Got parking over here. So you'll see the space, it's layout. Hadn't changed a lot, but it's changed a little. You guys are pretty much in your same locations. You're just going to see a few new names added to the list. <clears throat> so that's always shifting on us. And it's kind of a one of the bigger challenges is just locking it all down. But I think we're set on the exhibit. And we're really excited because we have a lot of new partners. And you're several new partners. Um, 
So the chairs are real life, lifeguard chairs. They get placed in the exhibit space ahead of you arriving. And then one other thing that I'm going to share is well, we haven't announced this formally. We're going to change the opening date of the chairs. So I know they're just throwing it at you like crazy. What are they thinking about? But, but the um, logistics and some of the new build is so packed into that week of like the 15th through the 20th that all of my new partners, the decorators, the new install, it's a big installation. It's not like a tiny one. This is a 140 foot metal installation that's got new lights and new programming and everything. It's a big, big deal. Well, all of that comes up against what is an event in the park that happens just ahead of us that's never taken place before. It's called Super Surfer Girl or Super Super Girl Surfer. <laughs> And Jack's Beach is hosting that Friday, Saturday, Sunday in the park right ahead of our installation. <clears throat> so we have no idea what the park's gonna even look like. And typically having done this nine years, anyone that's doing some event in that park space, it can get trashed, things are broken, backstage looks like crap. It's just a whole mess just to get it squared away and operational for, the, for us. So I asked the board last week, how do they feel about giving everyone a weekend to do decorating? And then we open it up on Wednesday, the Thanksgiving Eve, the 24th. So actually, as we talk through it and consider what happens and what it gains us from a decorating standpoint and how much burden it takes off of us from pushing and rushing, knowing that the park will be, you know, ready it'll look right and we can open it up on the bigger weekend anyways because wednesday ahead of thanksgiving it's going to be a great night obviously thanksgiving's a great time families are out they're going to go to the park anyways and then we still have friday saturday sunday so those are the big 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 nights we've noticed that for years now thanksgiving since we started opening up thanksgiving weekend it's always been a really big weekend for us so essentially we're giving you more time and we're taking away <clears throat> one of our, you know, smaller weekends where we could be operating and open, but it's just, you know, outside of it being opening night, we're not gaining and we're not gaining enough in crowd. We're not really gaining enough in synergy for the park and for all the things we're up against. So just mark that on your calendar. November 24th will be the opening of Deck the Chairs. It's going to be announced. We're sending press releases out. And then we'll start talking about what that gains you from a logistics and build standpoint. Okay. Any questions about that? Yeah. Will voting hey. still be that opening weekend just because there will be people out of town or is it going to change? No. So we're going to be building that. We're not even going to talk about it as an opening weekend anymore. That's the point. It's been on the calendar. November <clears throat> has been on the calendar as a, Deck the chairs opening, but only the calendars and not in major announcements, not in any media. You know, it's like it's been a date on a calendar. So we're going to. Curtis, that's Thanksgiving weekend, right? 24th, 20, 24th, 20, 24th is Wednesday. Okay. That's Thanksgiving. The 24th or 25th is Thanksgiving. So that's. Okay. It, yeah, that Thursday's Thanksgiving week of the 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, we're open that weekend. That's the official, that's what we're going to, we're going to use Wednesday night as our open ahead of Thanksgiving. I love that. Yeah, yeah I love everyone, that. Everyone that we've talked to really digs on it. It gives you more time. Yeah. Not stressing that. So again, back it up. And part of the challenge for all of you partners is, staff people when do you build how do you decorate can you pull people away from a day's work you know from a you know tuesday wednesday to be decorating in the park so what it does is it gains you back that saturday sunday to actually be doing some stuff in the park where you're not stressing you know because you gotta we were going to be opening up that saturday the 20th follow me so you would have only had monday through that friday 
maybe Saturday during the day to get ready. And it's just a big, big installation this year. And we just, with all the new sponsors and with the new install, we just. I love, I love thing, it's Thanksgiving Eve to Thanksgiving. I mean, that's the kickoff of the holidays anyways. Yeah. I mean, in general. Yeah. If this model works for, if this model works for us and everyone's happy this year, this is probably the way we're going to do it. Yeah. Here we got away with it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Could you just clarify what dates are the chairs going to be on site for us to begin decorating yeah. if it's opening on the 24th? Yeah. So what we're going to do is take the park on Monday, November 15th. But the way that happens is because it's right after that other festival, we're going to use that day to walk the park and to go ahead and clean it up and make the stage right and just get everything back to normal and, and sign off on it. Tuesday through what I hope is Wednesday, Thursday, we're going to spend time on the major installs like the Octopus Garden is going to be coming in and all that metal work is going to be dropped. And then the tree comes in. But I'd like to say that you start, we'll have chairs put on the ground for sure Wednesday, Thursday. So that would be like the 17th, 18th, starting Wednesday. If you said, hey, we want to get out there on Wednesday and start early, you'll have it. But the okay. goal would be to let people really start decorating Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st. But you'll have access to the park, to the stage, and anything you want beginning as early as really, the, I'd, I'd say the 16th, November 16th is a date you could mark, but it's still going to be kind of chaotic out there. I would like you to think about clearing the chaos and coming out when you know you'll have our attention and our time and energy if it works for you. So my goal is to kind of tell everyone, let's start decorating chairs like Wednesday, Thursday, you know, Wednesday, Thursday. Is that the 23rd? Yeah, uh, no. So you're still on like Wednesday is the 17th, 18th. Oh, that's what we got for. Yeah, okay. we're gonna be, we're gonna okay. be way ahead. And so just that's think of it awesome. in blocks of time like that. Yeah, you'll have. That's awesome. Yeah. Love it. So what I'm trying to do is get all of our heavy equipment and major props taken care of or at least started before, you know, we're dealing with decorating chairs. That way, you, if you've ever been there, well, you, you haven't. The new people haven't seen. We'll have 100 people out on the property. And some of them are split between major installations and some are doing chair decorating. And then some of it is just park setup and lighting the fencing and putting signs up and all that. So really what we're trying to do is mitigate what's happening with the chair decorators and thinking about when you guys most can probably use our source resources and probably it's easier for you. So the goal would be think about Wednesday, the 17th through the weekend and all the way up to Wednesday when we're setting up that night. So it's really a full week still of you decorating or having a chance to decorate. Um, but we're just trying to make it easier for everyone by splitting up some of the big heavy lifts and you don't have to see any of that stuff. Where are we allowed to park when we drive up with our truck to unload stuff? Is there a map for that? Yeah, so this is really, and when I send this back out to you guys, like I said, look for it in your inboxes tomorrow. But the sidewalks, everyone parks a lot of time on the sidewalks in the middle of the park. You can drive up and park and drop stuff. Um, this parking lot over here is a pretty good resource. At the end of the streets here, all the way over, we go this way. Here, that's a street. So we can um, park right off street, as long as we're not blocking the roads, okay? As long as you have traffic that can get through there, we're generally parking all over this space around it, by it, on it. You just can't move on the grass. You can take a chance and drive a little bit on the grass and get back off of it, but you'll get scolded by the city for parking on the grass and leaving a vehicle on the grass. So just kind of keep that in, in your, your work mode. Don't park your car on the grass and leave it. If you need to drive over the grass, you know, understand we got sprinklers on the ground and they can get broken and then we end up paying for them. But you can park. There's a lot of parking out there. And if people are coming in shifts, 
you shouldn't have any problem, you know, parking your car. Usually that sidewalk both, so you can see it's a double sidewalk. I don't know if you see it or not. So you got people park on both of those sidewalks in the middle. Okay. Am I holding everyone? Are you guys bored yet? Oh, okay. The um, so the chairs get dropped. I'm recommending the 16th, or actually back it up. I'm recommending the 17th. 18th is a start time for our for our chair decorating sponsors and then working it all the way through if you need wednesday opening night the 24th you can have it but just know we're going to be cleaning up the park at about four o'clock three well three o'clock we'll be clearing it and getting it ready for everyone for all of our visitors um do's and don'ts last week we met with the lifeguards just i can't stress it enough we we have a tricky thing delivering lifeguard chairs back to the core with nails and staples and crap like that in the chairs. So I want to answer questions and talk about that with um, anyone that has questions about attaching or assembling to a chair or anything related to that. We can, we can hit some of those questions right now. Betsy, what are you thinking? I'm thinking it sounds good. It was great. Okay. So no one no one has a question about attaching stuff items to chairs. No, we feel pretty good that we're going to be able to secure it with uh via zip ties or have other weights to stand up hopefully against mother nature. Yeah, we're going to we're going to have several of these big 50 gallon barrels back out there again. There's a I think we might have about 12 to 15 on, in storage. We fill them with water and the big, big chairs where they're kind of top heavy, we can anchor those things down for you guys. So just know early on when you're there in the park, if you feel like you're going high with something and you're ner nervous about it, let us know and we'll get one of those 50 gallon drums underneath it for you. I have a question about chair positioning. Uh -huh. Do we need to let you know in advance in the drawing, I assume where on the on our plot, we, we want the chair positioned and in one direction, or are we expected to move it ourselves? You'll probably end up moving it yourself. Um, it's crazy enough out there. We'll do our best to get them in the general position. The lifeguards drop them and then we rearrange them. And then you guys come out there and you're welcome to go ahead and move again and drop it down, okay. whatever you want to do. Yeah. Just try, try to be sensitive to that like 20 foot 20 square foot arrangement around you. What's, right. yeah. Hey, Curtis, what do you think um, during the day, what the um, like traffic is like during the day? Because I know I have someone on my team that's been out there during the day and it's not so attractive. <laughs> it's not attractive. Well, like, are you talking about the homeless? Yeah. No, I'm not talking about the homeless. Oh, I don't know. What's, I'm trying no. to figure out what you're talking about. No, during the day, uh, it's like, we can't like, can we have light, lights on and do activities during the day? Oh, uh, you're saying like the chairs look not that attractive during the day. Yeah, I didn't mean homeless. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. That was the prejudice comment. I'll probably get in trouble now. But I don't know what unattractive means. You're going to have to help me. Is, does the event not look pretty? Well, I think because at night it's so much, it is really it is. beautiful at night. But like during the day, room. there's a bunch of wires and things. Yes. Uh huh. So, do you have any like hints on how to make that more attractive during the day? Less, less ugly. More less attractive. Ugly. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a good, that's a good point. Now it's one of the challenges with the event is kind of like a hand built funky looking during the daytime. Um, I think we've gotten kind of used to it. That's my gig. I, I feel like um, park has from five until five, that it's like 12 hours of pretty. And unfortunately, you know, daytime, 
it's it, the way I fall back into this is I remember when there was no one even out there and there was nothing yeah. going on. And so we will figure this out over time, how it gets, you know, maybe a little more attractive. It's, it's a hard thing when you're building stuff out of, out of wood and plastics and, you know, you're not, you're not into that high end metal fabrication slick and finished and it's all pretty and perfect with wires tucked the way they're supposed to. It's, it's, you know, it's community coming out and building and they, we all trust and love the way we can make things handmade and pretty and different, but I get it. I don't, I just don't know how to, how to get past some of the wires and some of the, uh, let's just call it artistic looking part of it. Well, I think it's come a long way in the few years. It's it come is. A long way. We, 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 we've been working to keep making it better. And I think our sponsors are really the reason that's happening because they're starting to pay attention and they, they see it as the brand is out there and they don't want it. You know, you don't want to put something out there that doesn't reflect well on you. So people are working harder at that and um, it shows up, but it took a while, you know, the first couple of years, you are just like, well, I don't know. I've been to it and it's not that it's, it's okay. I, I also think adults, you know, we, we kind of think a certain way about what the expectations are and not to say this is just about kids, but I, I, I can tell you the spirit of deck the chairs at the very, very primal spirit is just kids and they don't care about the wires and the machinery and how it all works. They just want to play out in that park and see the lights and clang on bells and see bubbles in the air and, you know, be mesmerized by it, whatever the magic of Christmas is. So, hey, Curtis. So, if we want to have like a like a mini mascot or something walking around, I love that. Our... Gotta be careful. Okay, what? Careful how? Um, just give us notification because typically those kind of things may have to get approved by the city. Like Santa Claus has to get approved by the city. So if I have Santa out there, believe it or not, yeah, they have to get face rec recognition, licenses, all sorts of crazy stuff. Like he's got to be a this and that. But like Gator Bowl will come out there and they'll do their event, Pep Rally, and they'll bring their mascot out. And their mascot will be, you know, mostly up on the stage and more or less a, a not engaging the So I think the biggest issue with the mascot is how, how it's utilized and that at least we're notified that there's someone that's going to be walking around in an outfit. Okay. If, if we can, if we can, if, yeah, if we can agree to do that, then, you know, we're not caught off guard because even a guy that might show up as a Santa Claus, all of a sudden that's not our Santa Claus can, you know, have people. No, that, I get that. that. Yeah. It's, it gets, I always think about this from the public's, standpoint like how a city might respond to something and trying to be the advocate for the pu public park space and who we are as grown-up adults but then there's other people that are mischievous and don't give a crap and enjoy stuff and make things hard so like i'll have people talk about these great ideas for the slide i mean for the chairs and then we'll go well that's a beautiful idea but now what's that going to mean when a kid might take advantage of it the wrong way and they think it's a slide and they go down the chair and hurt themselves and now the parents you know pissed off because put a don't touch we have a lot of don't touch the chairs and don't climb on the chair signs not every chair has it but we try our best but it just becomes liability and then it becomes goofy goofy lawyers and stupid stuff like that so we try to mitigate some of it, but if we're talking about a mascot and you're saying, hey, Curtis, we're going to bring a mascot or this is who it is and this is the date, we just know there's someone there and we go, oh, that's perfect. We know who that is. Okay. Perfect. Who would be the mascot? That's it. Who would be the mascot? Um, I'm not sure. I have to talk to my broker, but I have an idea. Sunny. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to lean on some of our partnerships we have in the community with the Jacksonville Sharks and the Icemen. Oh, I love uh, that. So that's who we would be. So it'd be something mainstream, and we would definitely let you guys know in advance. 
we're just thinking maybe on the weekend because we can't have them there every night. But like on a Friday or Saturday when we know that there's going to be kids out there, uh, you know, again, I think it'll be great for photo ops. Oh, yeah, you're definitely tracking. That's that's okay. that's all I needed to hear. Oh, good. OK, so um, we're good on dates. People understand that kind of understanding the build time frame. You know that we have um, I'll have diagrams and in sort of a overall ex exhibit project sheet that's, well, it's multiple pages. It's like a 24 page book that I put together, but it shows the stage and the stage is kind of our production area. So just so you guys know, you're not fully on your own. Once you're out there in the park and decorating and you need tools or you might need some support from a volunteer or some other person that has some you know, skill set and hammering, or, you know, you need some pieces of wood, lumber cut, whatever we have a full kind of workshop where we're painting constructing building in the backstage area and you'll see that in a in a diagram and you'll know that you can utilize that as a resource so you'll have electricity to your chair you're going to be able to build and you know work at your chair the entire time you're out there but you can always go back to the stage and go, hey, I need to borrow this, or do you have another one of these, or do you have an extra ladder? And we'll try to help facilitate any of those needs as well. Hey, Curtis, I know we have like the um, hot chocolate station and everything, but are we allowed to have like, not so much a food station, but if we want to have like a hot chocolate place at our own? If you could kind of pull back on the hot chocolate, that would help us because that's going to be revenue as we're out there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just, but we don't, I, uh, we've had nights, we call them sponsor, meet the sponsors, and we've invited on weekends that we knew were popular people to just come out, set your tents. You guys are welcome to set a tent or really, I wouldn't try to set a tent at nighttime every night or on the weekends. I think having people out there, on the busy nights in some manner where they can engage our crowds is, is perfect. Um, but selling or not selling, but giving away, if you could stay away from hot chocolate and maybe make it hot, hot apple cider, or if it could be, you know, another holiday treat that doesn't impact us, then that would be, that would be fantastic. Just ask us kind of, we do hot chocolate. We do, and that's our big one. We do hot chocolate. We do some donuts and cookies. We do um, popcorn, like, you know, uh, caramel popcorn and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's generally holiday sweets and, and the cocoa and coffee. That's our, that's our gig. And then, you know, this year, I think if we work it out with Justin and his team. We've got some, potentially some pizza out there, which I know our crowds would love. Uh, we may have... Um, with Jeremiah's ice, they may do um, ice, icy stuff out there, you know, mm -hmm. and he's going to work out a deal for us so we can continue. They can provide something to our guests and then we can see some revenue from it. I think they're working out a percentage on the ICs and stuff. So that's really, really important to take the chairs. Most of the revenue, in fact, all the revenue really comes from you guys, the small businesses and the nonprofits that do the chair decorating. And then we have to split it between any of the additional build that we're doing, any of the programming we're doing. We're, we're really dividing up a small bucket still to run this thing for six weeks. So usually the concessions are where we can find ourselves. If we're at break even, that's where we're going to get our money back. And then those monies will go to the high school arts programs. We're, that's, we used to sponsor the lifeguards. We still do. We get we cut them a check um, annually now for five thousand dollars, and that helps them repair chairs, buy new chairs, you know, whatever they need to do from the chair standpoint. And now, what we're doing as an organization is leaning into the arts, and especially children's arts programs, outreach. You know, just, just we love that aspect of deck the chairs, yeah. and music shows, and all that. And we want to see the art programs, the Jack Speed's arts programs, accelerated. So. That's where our that's where our proceeds are now going. <laughs> Long-winded way of saying anything you can do to not really impact our concessions, but to add to it, 
like add something to it is great. What about a t-shirt? So we have t-shirts. Yeah. So we have ornaments and t-shirts and we have a lot of little plastic toys and stuff like that. So we will sell toys out there uh, in the concessions tent and t-shirts out there. Um, it's a non-brand. Well, it has a deck of chairs logo on it. Typically I in the past had a couple of sponsor logos that got too complicated. So um, we just keep it a simple shirt, long sleeve, you know, T um, they're collectors. People love collecting them. We'll sell, you know, not huge numbers, but we'll sell every weekend. So, uh, all right. yes. We were, um, if, would this be okay? We weren't planning on selling anything, but we were just going to have like a little bucket of homemade ornaments that the kids could write on with a Sharpie and hang on our tree. Is that okay? Of course. Yeah. Love okay. it. Yeah. Yeah. Projects like that, um, engagement with, the audience or with the crowds is fantastic. Um, you know, that's the whole spirit of the event. It's a way to get you guys to have, just tell your story out there, do the outreach, um, bring some joy to those lives and then, you know, see how it goes for you. See if you like it, you know, at the end of the year, I think it's always a blast. You never know what to expect. The weather will kill us sometimes. And speaking of that, um back to the drawings so i only ask that we have drawings and know what you're doing so i can help you guys so the sooner i get to see what you're doing or have a sense of it i can give you feedback on materials and construction and some recommendations so we have the fifth as a date for turning in drawings. some of my sponsors i'm not going to be asking them for stuff because I already know they can do it and I don't have to worry and they can do whatever the heck they want. And you guys will graduate to that. Like literally this year, I won't, you won't ever have me pestering you or bothering you because I know you're comfortable, but it's just me helping you solve problems. You wouldn't, you normally don't expect. I, I've seen some pretty interesting stuff out there, like people using cardboard and you're like, Oh no. Oh, don't don't use cardboard people creating big sales you know that are designed really cool on paper but now they're huge wind sails that'll never stand you know a 20 mile an hour wind um it, just stuff like that and then you go well what's that it's a beautiful cool looking santa thing or it's a really really cool um house but are you building it out of plastic is it wood and how are you going to fabricate a feature like a face oh i'll offer that so one of the solutions that I kind of leaned into over the years that I like when it comes to graphics and getting something done, like, a, I don't know, let's call it a six foot tall Santa. How do you get a six foot tall Santa if it's not an inflatable or if you're not buying a super expensive Santa from some shop somewhere? I, from a graphic standpoint, in illustrating or finding photography, I've done that my whole life. So if someone has this image or idea or they own something that, you know, can be projected or scaled up and we can digitally send it off to my, my art vendor, graphics vendor, we can do laminated like graphic stuff and apply those laminated materials to surfaces, plastic surfaces, you know, uh, wood surfaces, and all of a sudden you've got something rather good size out in the park that's visually cool. So think that way too, when it comes to building something and making something that from the painting or graphics point, you're like, well, how do we do the rest of this? We can take patterns and take designs and get those put on you know, white laminate or white vinyl, let's call it. And it's a sticky adhesive back and you just apply it to a surface and then you cut the darn thing out. And now you've got this nice big shape that has a really cool graphic on it. So it's a, it's a thought for you guys and um, I've used it. It's a good tool. We can get that done for you, help you out. If you have something big like that, you don't know. How do you feel about chloroplast? So Coreplast is great. They use it all the time. That's a great medium. It's cheap. Um, We're thinking of using that with wood backing, basically to be able to have the images and then having it actually applied to wood just so that we don't create a big old sale. Yep, that's perfect. Why didn't, so, you, 
But if you use 10 mil chloroplast, then it's that it has that cardboard feel, but it's still plastic. So you got it. So I don't know what the, so the, the half inch is, I use that quite a bit, that really thick half inch for plastic. Yeah. You, don't even, you don't even have to mount that to wood sometimes, depending on how big the darn thing is. Got so, it. So core plast, great, great material for graphics. Because that, that, to your point, what you just said, that application of the graphic onto that surface is done all the time by those vendors. And they know how to, you know, do it. They can get it to you quickly. It's a, it's a, it's a really, I think it, it's still got some expense attached to it, but for the results that you're kind of going to expect, it's a great. Yeah, method. I think so. And yeah. then you mentioned um, having drawings to you by October 5th. Obviously if we have them sooner than later, we can get them submitted to you and I guess jump on a conference call and have you pick apart our idea. Yeah. Yeah, no, I would, I don't, I don't as much pick it apart. I just love to talk to you, talk through it with you so that you see what happens is I'm going to talk first about materials. And then if something comes to me that might help you, that expands the idea or, you know, I just been in the park now nine years. So I've seen just about everything produced yeah. in that park. So I like to help you out with that. Okay. I have a question about, um, supplies do you have a good source that's not going to be insanely expensive for like giant bows or even if they're used because i mean they're probably going to get trashed outside anyway do you know of a, a shop or something that would be good to get that from as opposed to you know michael's right great question and it gets back to okay so two two methods that i always go to and you've already done it um you've researched well, I hope specifically not just Michaels, but research giant bows and then looked at the materials they're made of and where they're coming from. Um, but yeah, because obviously those, I think those bows probably exist, not like probably made because you see them on cars, you see them in decorative things, you see them like PRI will use them. I don't, you know, these things have to be made for, you know, event companies. So I would first just do that broad search, like giant bows out of plastic or, you know, not. A oh, yeah. I just <clears throat> I just didn't know if over the years, like you had displays that people had like a pile of random <laughs> used stuff, you know, like like we keep our Christmas de decorations in the attic. Right. And it gets used, yeah. used and used. I didn't know if there was like a community pool of that kind of stuff. No, but you could start one. That would be great. <laughs> all right well i'll look no and we keep stuff and there's bows but how i mean we would probably have a few bows uh, in our warehouse right now but i don't know how big they are they're really big giant ones um but getting back to like making those things it's really interesting if you and people don't have this kind of time i get it i don't pretend to think you've got a bunch of time to be building something for deck the chairs but um you know, if you can assign people or get someone to do a project like that and they can make something really cool for you that's out there on that, you know, chair and they can brag about it, then that's part of the, the joy of building and decorating because someone can take some ownership in it. So, but you can also make a flat bow, you know, just like we talked about. It can be one of those where does it need to be, you know, a full on three dimensional bow or can it be sort of something designed and built a little differently where it's out of core plast and it looks really cool and it does it functions like it's supposed to function but it's just not a literal like gotta get a bow and it's gonna just be destroyed at the end of deck the chairs now it's maybe it's just a flat item that's really big and beautiful and it just decorates the top of something <clears throat> How's everyone doing? Any other questions? I'm seeing heads. Oh, I think I'm good right now. Alexandra, how are you doing? Good. Just taking notes. <laughs> Do you have some ideas that we totally like got you really scared? Um, we're trying to do something kind of big. I don't want to give away too much. So we're kind of doing something kind of big that's going to 
um, like go out from the side of the chair, that's also going to be the same height as the I chair. So I, we're just trying to, or also like, we have no boys on our team. <laughs> so we have no one who has any building experience at all, except for like husbands and dads. So we're just trying to decide what material would be best for that. Cause it's going to be like a kind of like a wall situation, but, okay. and it's not, but it's not going to be like perfectly square. So it's going to go out from the side of our chair. So we're Both just sides are one side, one side. So is the chair presenting like profile or is it presenting straight on? Straight on. Gotcha. Well, listen, I mean, again, I'm always available for this and I'd love to help you guys, you know, on a conference call, a Zoom call, walk you through. You can throw, show me the really, really rudimentary rough sketch. And then, you know, I can, at least without revealing everything to the, the crowds, we could talk through it. Okay. Um, I have, um, Kayla and I like kind of broke down what we think we want to do for sure um, last week. So I'll have her, I'll talk to her today and see if we can get like our sketches and everything done so we can have a conversation about that. Yeah, yeah. We're going to make this, I, I, I just want to continue to reiterate that this is not meant to stress you guys. It really is meant to be fun. It's work. Don't get me wrong. There's work. But um the joy of decorating and being, you know, able to solve this problem and do something out there in the park that's, you know, really unique to Jack's Beach and to you and to the crowds that come out there. And once you're, you know, it, you get out there, you see what happens. So if you have a chair that, you know, has people curious about what it says and how it works and looks, I mean, you're a rock star. That's what happens. You can have like hundreds of thousands of people doing photo op because you did this crazy funky fun chair and then that's that's the point of it having fun so let me know when i can help you and i'll make myself available and we'll walk through it and i can do some drawings for you as well and then i do know people that build and we'll have support out there that day so you have well not day those days so if you can utilize your time out in that park um, we're there loading in from load in to when we finally open the park, we're there 7 a.m. in the morning till seven at night. So there's 12 hours of decorate and build time every day for at least a week. It's a ton of time to get this done. So you uh, see people, I've seen people do their chair in one day and it's done and it's gorgeous. It looks like, you know, it would have taken them three days, four days to do it. I've seen other people struggle for four days and get, you know, nothing done. <laughs> it's just a little bit of a plan, a little bit of a plan and a, enough people kind of sticking at it. You got a whole week, literally with 12 hours every day. And all of us that are going to be there working with you to get this thing done and make you happy. Curtis, I have a question with regards to power supply. If we're going to be working on site, yeah, how, how's that going to work? Do we need to bring our own generator, or are they going to have places we can tap into for power? Yeah, that's yeah. So again, you will have power that day when you arrive. Every chair will have power already to it. Got it. Yep. And you'll be able to steal from other people if you need more plugs and stuff. At least those days of building. Okay. It's until we're finally active going live do the plugs really become important and how we you know plug into the we call them bollards these little posts that are out there they have a limited number of plugs there's enough to cover all of our chairs we just can't hog you know everyone can't get sometimes it's it's about you can get two plugs per chair sometimes depending on where you're at and we can move things around a little bit to help you but it's usually a plug that goes out to an adapter that has four a four prong adapter or whatever you want to call it. And off of that, you should power up a chair pretty well. If you want to start getting into bubble machines and other kind of electronics, you know, you, it threatens a little bit of the, it's a 20 amp situation. We don't have a lot of power, but it can, it can handle, you know, an LED lighted chair really pretty easily. Is that good? Yeah, great. All right. So we're at 723. 
I've talked a ton. Any other questions? You guys are awesome. Thank you, Exit, for showing up in mass. And th oh, yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you. you Meredith. It's good to see you again. Um, guys, call me anytime you need help. Email me. Uh, have a great rest of the week. I'll be sending some stuff out tomorrow, okay? Excellent. Thank you, Curtis. Bye, right, Curtis. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.